Unfortunately, hacks are fairly common. There's all different types of software that can be installed, that can extract information from your computer, and believe it or not, various devices connected to your computer. One of the things that Bitcoiners warn against most is to never, ever store your seed phrase on your phone, especially as a picture. And guess what? Somebody did it, and it went horribly wrong. Let's dive into the story. Welcome back, everyone. That's right. We are going to do a fear, a fear story today. Uh, shout out to Lucky Red Fish for tagging me on this one. That's right, guys. Coins stolen from photos. These stories always scare people. Now, even if you're not inclined to store your seed phrase on your phone, just remember, all it takes is one moment of carelessness, one time where we think it's okay. The story we're about to go over, originally presented by the Twitter account Smart Ape, just goes to show you how bad it really is. And not only that, but it also outlines essentially what, um, what thieves, right, are willing to go through, what scammers are willing to go through to get to your Bitcoin. It all started with this post. Your seed phrase is at risk. A North Korean hacker group has developed a new method to drain your wallet. On September 4th, my brother had $25,000 of assets drained from his ledger wallet. I was perplexed. After checking his transaction history, I found no interaction with a drainer, a malicious smart contract, or anything suspicious. There was nothing. I found nothing on chain. That meant his seed phrase had been physically discovered. He only had two copies of his seed phrase. One on paper stored in a locked safe. The other was a photo of that paper stored in a secure folder on his phone. I mean, that's, do we really need to read the rest? I'm, I am going to read the rest, but th that's it, right? Like we know, we, we know it, it doesn't matter. There's, there's no secured folder on your phone. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways, after running a full diagnostic on his phone, I discovered the presence of malware called Spy Agent. This malware was hidden in a TV streaming app and had very unique way of operating. It scanned all the data on the phone, searching for patterns resembling a seed phrase. What's astonishing is that this malware could even recognize a seed phrase from a photo, even though it wasn't in text form. This is this is pretty crazy. I, I got to tell you, this is... This is really scary stuff. And the thing about it is this, right? There are so many different app developers and even myself, when, when I go to download an app that I've never tried before, I, I'm always weary. I actually, um, I go and I know that this can all be doctored, right? Um, but I go through the reviews, I take a look uh, and I don't just look at one or two. I don't just take a look at the most popular, the most recent. I try to go through as many reviews as possible. I understand that that's time consuming and not everybody can do that. But to me, like, you know, it, it's, it's this, that is one of the elements that I can control, right? We cannot control the things outside of ourselves, but we do have the ability to control ourselves and what we do. So in my eyes, it's like, okay, well, this is one of the things that I can do. The other thing that I do besides looking at the reviews is I take a look to see how many people have downloaded it. Um, you know, if you see an app, right, that's a couple of years old or something like that, it's got just a handful of downloads. I don't know. And again, I'm not saying that something that has thousands of downloads cannot be a scam. It absolutely can be. I just think that there's less likelihood because more and more people would have installed it and there'd be more people susceptible to it, which means a person sooner than later uh, would have called would have called it out. Um, the the other thing uh, that I do is I will actually go and put the name of the app in a search engine and type the word scam or malware next to it or something like that just to see what actually comes up. Look, it, it, it's just a few minutes of research, right? And if you, for whatever reason, whatever reason, are actually keeping a copy of your seed words on your phone in whatever format, 
if you don't think those extra minutes are worth, first of all, you shouldn't have that on your phone. But if you insist on doing this behavior, shouldn't you at least give yourself the benefit of the doubt? Take the extra few minutes, do some research on the apps that you're installing, right? It, it, the same way that Bitcoin could be life-changing money, you checking that information out before you install a crappy app you're most likely going to delete anyways can also be life-changing. Anyways, okay, enough with the rhetoric, back to the, back to the story. Let's go. Upon further investigation, I found that the cybersecurity company McAfee had already identified this malware. They had compiled a list of 280 fake apps running the malware. However, they estimate that only 10% of the apps have been identified, meaning many others are still out there. Mobile malware spreads through phishing campaigns using fake messages from trusted sources. Once clicked, these links direct users to sites that imitate legitimate ones, tricking them into downloading malicious apps. Always verify links before clicking. And here's an example uh, given right here. This is a funeral helper. Not gonna lie, but um, if I if I was on my phone and I got prompted to install an app like this for something like this, I I wouldn't click. I, I mean, I wouldn't go any further. It's just it's just complete it's just complete nonsense. And and of course, right? Um, it, it's very interesting that it's something like funeral helper. Uh, because of course, right, this is the type of thing that tugs at your heartstrings. Remember, our feelings get used against us. Our feelings get used to discredit common sense. Our feelings get used to discredit truth. So the idea that our feelings wouldn't be used against us in this type of scenario um, is just naive. Absolutely. And if something tugs hard enough at your heartstring, I mean, come on, let's be honest. A funeral app stealing your seed phrase? Who would do that? Continuing on, clicking the download link prompts the users to install an APK. For the people that don't know, uh, an APK is the file extension for apps that are installed on um, Google phones. It requests access to sensitive information like SMS, contacts, and storage under the pretense of standard app functionality, but it's a privacy breach. Once installed, the app steals sensitive data such as contacts, SMS photos, and device details and sends them to a remote server and can also receive commands to manipulate settings, send SMS, and confirm data theft compromising privacy and security. This is, oh my gosh, this is nasty. But believe it or not, guys, this actually gets worse, okay? Uh, and, and again, shout out to, uh, to, to the smart ape because really did a great job documenting this whole entire thing. Okay, so here's some more screenshots. Allowing unauthorized access to files and index pages without credentials. This exposed the server's operations, showing how it gathered data, including files mimicking banks and postal services. Because of this misconfiguration, victims' personal data were publicly exposed. So... Not only were you hacked, but all of that data, even the hackers aren't securing your data from other hackers. They're just leaving it right out in the open. Anyways, other hacker groups use this information to blackmail victims or use the discovered seed phrases for their own gains. What's even crazier is that anyone could access the admin page designed to manage victims. It displayed a list of devices with various actions that anyone could perform. The more victims there were, the larger the list grew. The attacker's main objective was to steal mnemonic recovery phrases for cryptocurrency wallets, targeting victims' crypto assets to access and drain them. The thread processes the stolen data using Python and JavaScript on the server side. Images are converted to text using optical character recognition, OCR techniques, and the data is managed through an admin panel. This shows the attacker's sophisticated approach. Final tweet in this thread, the lesson, right? Which, which we know, never store your seed phrase on any electronic device, even if it's stored offline. Whether it's a PC or a phone, there are now highly sophisticated hacks capable of detecting seed phrase patterns, even from a photo. It's a nasty one, uh, and, and I gotta be honest, I don't see these things getting any better. Um, with the continued attention on Bitcoin and crypto, um, it is not a far-fetched idea that more people will be attempting to store their value uh, specifically in Bitcoin. Uh, so 
it's not far-fetched to believe that the hacks are going to get more and more sophisticated. And you, you got to remember this, right? Um, I know that there's a lot, I shouldn't say there's a lot, but there's always some discussion about $5 wrench attacks, right? And for the people who, for whatever reason, don't know what a $5 wrench attack, it just means somebody physically attacking you for your Bitcoin wallet, your hardware uh, wallet, whatever it is, right? Um, essentially, it's it's a physical attack to steal your Bitcoin. Now, that involves a lot of risk on the attacker side. Okay, it does. It just it simply does. Right. It puts them significantly more at risk than using a method like malware and like spyware using techniques such as phishing. Right. So those methods are far superior to a five dollar wrench attack. So the reality is, is that those types of attacks are simply going to become more and more common. and with more people growing up in this technocentric focused world, it's it's not a stretch to imagine that even a person who's not a programmer by nature knows how to compile some amount of code, right? At the very least, knows how to run a script. So, or at the very least, knows how to send one to somebody. So it's, I mean... The, the idea that this type of thing is somehow going to go away, it won't, it will not be going away. I believe the proliferation of this type of behavior um, has really only begun. Um, so yes, we need to be very careful. We need to remember that attackers are always going to go for low hanging fruit. And as we saw in this particular story, what did they use, right? In order to gain access, some funeral companion, right? Tugging on the heartstrings. I, I could never get hacked through something like that, right? Never. Uh, it's really, it's really sad to see. The last piece that I want to mention, which um, I'm not trying to bash Ledger, but it, it's going to happen anyways. Ledger has had such a checkered past um, with several data leaks. Um, their Ledger Live service, which if you sign up for, discloses a whole bunch of personal information to them. Um, I mean, I, I hate to, to give advice and say, don't buy this hardware wallet, because again, everybody, there's nothing actually wrong per se with the ledger hardware wallet. Like there's, there's nothing actually wrong with it. Indeed, there's different things you can pick apart about it, like saying, well, it's closed source code and you can't trust them. I can't disagree with that. Um, but I just feel with a company that has had such um, such a terrible track record of securing its customer data. I don't know. It just seems like par for the course, right? It's, I would have been way more surprised if they set a cold card or if they set a foundation device or if they said, you know, like a, a, a Trezor, you know, but when they said ledger, I was like, eh, it's a ledger user. Am I, am I really surprised that, that they had their seed phrase on the phone? And again, I, I'm not trying to be mean and insult ledger, uh, users. I, I know, um, I know a person who is very intelligent, much more intelligent than me, uh, and knows way more about code than I do and has a ledger, uh, signing device. Okay. And that person swears by it. I don't agree with him. I didn't agree with him when he first told me that he had a ledger. I laughed. Um, but again, uh, it's, you know, there's nothing actually wrong necessarily with the hardware unless you pick apart some, you know, certain aspects of nuance. But, but again, I just feel like it's par for the course that this was a ledger user. Anyways, guys, that's all I wanted to talk about today. It is a very scary world out there. Don't think for a second that these types of attacks, this type of behavior is only going to be shrinking. That is wrong. Think, okay, this is only going to be increasing. And the only thing we can do is be vigilant, be patient, and don't be afraid to look things up. That's all I wanted to talk about today, guys. I'll catch you tomorrow.